Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we are answering is, what's in the box in regards to Funfair? Not to be confused with another game that's a very similar theme called Unfair. Unfair is a take that theme park building game. Well, this is a lighter, less take that, no stabbing your friends in the back, more accessible, more lighter, fun to play version of Unfair for people who don't want such a heavier cutthroat game. So this is from Good Games Publishing. This is an updated new standalone game. You don't need Unfair to play this. You don't need the Unfair expansion. This is a standalone game in the Unfair universe. This is the new lighter um, entry point to the Unfair universe. What people I know want to see is what's in the box here. I was extremely impressed by the components in Unfair. I am expecting the same thing in this box. So let's take a look. Alrighty, so now we're going to take a look in the box for Funfair, a lighter version of Unfair. So uh, there's the picture for Unfair. So here we go. The first thing we've got is a Good Games Publishing catalog showing off their games. And there we have uh, Guildmaster, Funfair. We have Unfair and the Unfair Expansion, as well as Fairy Season and Fluttering Souls. That is their entire collection. And I just learned that I own all but one of Good Game Publishing's games. Thank you for that, Good Games Publishing. Now we have the rules. It's a nice bright rule book. A uh, nice shot of all the components here that you get with the game, the different types of cards, the board, which looks, as far as I can tell, very similar to Unfair so far. Uh, we're looking at all the different symbols, the card anatomy. Um... Continuing on, we've got some nice little call-outs here to highlight specific rules. Um, we are looking at a nice summary of how to play and how to lay out your theme park. We are done by page 11, so that is significantly shorter than the original. There is a quick reference guide including strategy tips as well as a nice scoring app link here as well. Um, I didn't notice a QR code for learning the game. There is one of those for Unfair. It doesn't look like they provided one of these for fun fairs. So maybe they're just assuming it's simple enough you won't need it. So we do have that. So one of the things to note for this game is the playtime in the original is 25 minutes for player. This is only 15, so it's definitely much lighter. Uh, here we have the board, which again is very similar to the original board game. The, the original unfair board, it is two-sided with different size market. I have to assume based on the number of players. So we have the two-sided board. Um, this one is all face up. So you have park, market, everything face up, whereas this one, you have stuff facing this way and this way. So you have a market facing this way, and if you look, you have the city and blueprint boards. So I don't know, I, it might just be a comfort thing. Uh, no plastic insert on this one. So here's a downgrade from the original game, which fair enough, they're trying to make this game more accessible. It's also cheaper than the original game. You just have a cardboard box insert with um, all the tokens in one spot. You've got some plastic here, and you have decks of cards. It looks like there's only two decks of cards um, split into a cardboard insert. It is worth noting that you should be able to fit sleeves cards in this easily. So the first thing I'm going to highlight here is a nice little mini coaster. Uh, this is similar to the original game. The similar, the original game had a four-seater coaster. I don't know if it's a first player token or what, but this one is a two-seater coaster, which I thought was cute. Nice plastic piece here. Uh, we have a score sheet, which, uh, the thickness of the pad, they expect you to play this game less than the original. It's about one fifth the uh, thickness of the score sheet in the original game. Then we have a bunch of cardboard tokens. These do match the tokens in the original game. Comes in a resealable plastic thing here. So we have a Funfair, like first player marker. There is a standee for this. And money, and that is it for tokens. So for those who haven't seen the original, we have denominations of one in five here and 25 only. Apologize for the crinkly sound. So we have ones, fives, and 25s. And something that impressed me about this money is it is, besides being different colored, so that's a nice thing, is the ones are blue and hexagonal. The fives are round, look like poker chips, and green. And then the 25s are red, and they are square with um, rounded corners, cut corners. So slightly octagonal, but like they feel distinctly different. And they're also different sizes. So the one is smaller than the five, which is smaller than the 25. I am really impressed by this money. This is money I'm tempted to steal and use in other games. So we have a bag full of that and a start player token. 
we're going to put back in. Then we have two packs of cards. Uh, these are not divided up by um, theme, which they were in the original game. So I'm just going to pick a random pack here and open it up and see what we get. So we start off, we have a, a blueprint deck closing soon and a blueprint deck closed card. We have four scoring summaries that also summarize the rules on the other side. We have a deck of award cards. Um, finest Park Award. Build a park with the most quality icons. So we have, it looks like, end game scoring. Uh, Seniors Value Award. Build a park with the most guest services icons and so on. There are five of these. So if there's four players, there's probably one that's not in play. Then we have a large number of park cards. And those are split over the second deck. So I'm going to crack open the second deck. And we're going to put all these park cards together. Yes, yeah, so... Oh. That's something different. That's purple. So we have a huge stack of park cards here. Like, that is a significant weighted stack of cards you have here. Uh, we're just going to go through some of these. So these are your attractions and so on. So you have your fairy tale performer. You've got the jungle performer. you got Indiana Jones pirate performer. Robot performer. What's amusing is these all match the park types of the original game. Uh, some cards that I definitely recognize from the other game. A whole bunch of comfortable seatings. Flagpole, corkscrew elements, inclined loops, whirlpool elements. So these are all coaster elements. You can show off a couple of those here. Vertical drop element. More upgrades like air conditioning. Express queue. I wonder if you could use any of these in the other game. Information kiosk. Lockers and coat check. Restrooms. Very important at a theme park. Superior quality cards. Deluxe quality cards, which I remember the other game, they were all uh, shabby quality cards, basically. Uh, fairy tale themes, jungle themes, pirate themes, robot themes. So those are the themes from the original game. Uh, we have the Twister Roller Coaster, the Floorless Roller Coaster, the Flying Coaster, the Whirling Teacups, the Giant Wheel, the Monorail. We have a bunch of really standard theme park things here, the Swinging Ship, and so on. I am not going to go through all of these. We also have the Natural Order Food Outlet, cinemas, animatronic shows. All of this features really excellent looking artwork showing it. A freak show. The cotton candy vendor. The snack seller. All the way going to the HR manager and the workshop supervisor. So that's it for park cards. Again, there are a ton of these. Then we have showcase cards. Uh, four of those that are really highlighted. So these are one showcase attraction. So the Wicked Queen's Tower from Fairy Tale Land. The Tomb of Perils from the Jungle Land. The Treasure Galleons for the Pirate Land. And the Tech Defender Ultra Mecha from the Robot Land. We have a number of blueprint cards. Again, these are scoring cards. They have um, complete all items to get so many points and then a bonus to get extra points. Oh, there is a significant stack of these. Um, they're blue, so I can't really hold them in front of my, my close-up camera, but a huge stack of blueprint cards with a scoring value, then bonus points for doing something more. Then we have city cards, a lot of those. So these are events like a two-for-one deal. A bank error, a change of plans, a golden opportunity, recycling program, and so on. Finally, we have four gate cards, one for each person's park. These are identical. And that is it. So instead of having four different decks that you mash together in different ways in this game, it looks like you just use one standard deck that covers all of the original themes from the original game. So I'm going to put these back in this box as best I can. Note again, it is just a cardboard insert. So it's not like a specific spot to put these cards. I'll probably end up bagging them, though, to be honest, I just slid them into one of the compartments and they fit well enough. Again, that would fit sleeve cards, no problem, which is a nice touch. Uh, but no, like, nice plastic insert that the expansion had, or that the base game had. But you know what? If that significantly reduces the cost, it means more people get to have the fun, fair, unfair experience. So be it. The board does fit nicely and will hold everything in place. I do have to agree with that. So the cardboard insert is divoted slightly so that the board lays on top and holds everything in place. That's a nice touch. Rule book. Product catalog. Box cover. 
done. So there you have it. Everything you get in the box for the game Fun Fair. A two to four player lighter introduction to theme park building meant as the first step to the unfair series of games, which are a little bit more cutthroat, a little more take that. Sorry, heavier games, a little more going on. So that was Fun Fair from Good Games Publishing. Really looking forward to checking this out. I'm probably going to play this one before I dive deep into the unfair territory. Trying out Fun Fair first. Plus, this looks like it's going to be more fun to be able to play with my whole family. Whereas I may save the other one for playing with my gamer friends. So thank you for joining me. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Make sure you pound that subscribe button, ding that bell. Make sure you turn on notifications so you always know when we put out new content. You can also click the eye up here in the corner if you're watching on YouTube and get a bunch of cards, which will lead you to things like our webpage at tabletopbellhop.com where you'll find all kinds of awesome gaming content, including other unboxing videos, reviews, and answers to your gaming and game night questions. If you've got a question for us, send it to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or go to the webpage and click on Ask the Bellhop. All right, one more piece of self-promotion. If you did enjoy this video and would like to see us continue to make more, please consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. That's it for me. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on.